So today we're going to continue with section 3 of our unit on reactions in uh, aqueous solutions looking at another type of reaction called acid-base reactions. So first let's talk about some properties of acids and bases. So acids, it comes from the Latin word acidus, and you probably know a little bit about acids. They can usually, depending on their concentration, be dangerous. Um, I wouldn't recommend eating you know, hydrochloric acid, but you do eat a lot of acids, and usually they're what give something a sour taste. So you can probably think of like some fruit that are sour or other food items. They probably have acid in them. For example, vinegar is a weakened form of what's called acetic acid, and citric acid is also present in lots of citrus. So grapefruit, lemons, even oranges have it. Um, limes definitely have it okay, in different amounts. I actually knew some guy who was allergic to citric acid, which would kind of suck because you can't eat any I mean, it's in a lot of stuff you don't realize. Okay, so bases are kind of considered the opposite. The word for base comes from the Latin word alkalis. So if you remember, like on the periodic table, we have the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals. Those are kind of related to bases. Bases generally are bitter and slippery. So again, you would not want to eat a very concentrated base. Um, they're usually in a lot of household cleaning supplies. Bleach, if you ever, you know, get bleach on your hands, it's very slippery. and also really dry out your hands. Don't try that. Um, but bases are present in a lot of household cleaning supplies. In fact, I heard this story about this professor who was demonstrating the difference between acids and bases. So he had this beaker of acid, and he was talking about it or whatever, and he leaned over and his tie got in the beaker, and it ate, it ate his tie. So he changed his tie and put a new one on, and then he's got this beaker of base, and he's, again, talking about it leaning over, and, you know, his tie goes in the base, and it eats it because it's so concentrated. So that's, you know, kind of like if you think about acid reflux, that's why you have heartburn, because the acid is coming back up into your esophagus, kind of the same thing. So he eats his tie, so he changes his tie again. So then he puts the two beakers together and ends up drinking it, which I would never recommend, but... Technically, you could do it because, and we'll talk about this in a minute, acids and bases, when you combine them together, they neutralize and they produce water and what's called a salt, which is not just table salt, there's lots of types of salt. Um, and so he had put an indicator in the acid and base, so when he mixed them together, if it turned a certain color, he knew that it was neutral and then it would be safe to drink. And then obviously, if it didn't change that color, he probably, hopefully, would not have drank it. But um, still probably not the best idea ever. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more specifically about acids and bases. So acids and bases will conduct electricity. If you remember when we did the pickle lab and we tested the acetic acid or the vinegar, it maybe didn't light up the light bulb, but there was bubbling and a reaction at the nails. And then the hydrochloric acid that we tried did light up the light bulb. Um, and so because they conduct electricity, that means that they must contain ions. There must be some cations and anions floating around, allowing those electrons to be free to move so they can conduct electricity. So an acid is specifically a substance that produces H plus ions, or what are called hydronium ions, and these are H3O plus. Okay, so when they are dissociated and dissolve in water, um, they will produce an H plus ion. There are lots of different definitions of acids and bases. This definition is called an Arrhenius acid. Uh, later on, we'll get more into pH, and we'll talk about the other types of acids, including Lewis and Bronsted Lowry. We can have strong and weak acids, just like we can have strong and weak electrolytes. A strong acid will completely dissociate or break apart into its ions. A weak acid, some of the hydrogens will come off some of the acids, but on some they won't. So it's, it's weaker, it won't dissociate as completely as something that's strong. Okay, a base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions. We know hydroxide is a polyatomic, it's that OH minus, so when you take a base and you put it in water, traditionally you're going to get hydroxide ions. We can also have strong and weak bases, just like we can have strong and weak acids. Okay, so we talked about how the guy combined the acid and the base together and then he knew he could drink it. And that's because when an acid dissociates and it produces the H plus ion, and a base dissociates and produces the OH minus ion. Those combine together and form water. We know water as H2O, but another way to write water is HOH, and that's basically just the hydroxide, the, not the hydroxide, sorry, the hydronium ion, which sometimes we write as that H3O plus, okay, or we can write it as our H plus, and then it's that OH minus hydroxide ion. 
So that's one of the properties of an acid-base reaction. It will always, always, always form water as a product. So this is really similar to double replacement reactions, um, but this time we're going to form water instead of that precipitate, where we learned about in section one, where we have to do all the solubility. So remember, a precipitate is a solid that's formed during a reaction. It is not aqueous or insoluble, and so it becomes a solid. Okay, so let's look at an example. So we have HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, and NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide. Because of this OH present, we could identify sodium hydroxide as our base, and hydrochloric acid, because of the hydrogen in front, we're going to identify that as our acid. And so we're going to predict our products. Well, here we have a cation in the hydrogen. The only other anion available for it to bond with is the OH. So we have HOH, and that will form a liquid. And then we have our other product. We have to list the cation first. Sodium is our only other cation, and it has to combine with the chlorine. So we have Na, which is a 1 plus, and chlorine, which is a 1 minus, so that is a neutral compound. And I also know that sodium chloride is aqueous meaning it'll dissociate in water. So the general form for an acid-base reaction is an acid plus a base forms water and a salt. Now, we did form sodium chloride, which is table salt, but we can form lots of other types of salts. Remember, any of those halogens, halogen means salt forming, so almost any alkaline metal or alkaline earth metal with a halogen is considered a salt. Okay, so let's try an example. So write molecular equation for the reaction of aqueous nitric acid. Okay, this is where naming of all those acids is going to come back. So if you need a review on that, go to the nomenclature unit and watch the uh, naming acids video. So nitric acid, it has an IC, and there's no hydro in front like hydrochloric acid, so I know it's a polyatomic, and the IC means it's an ATE ending, so I'm looking for nitrate, which is NO3. Hydrogen's a 1 plus, nitrate's a 1 minus, and it's aqueous, so that compound is correctly written. I'm also up there. And it combines with aqueous potassium hydroxide. Potassium is a 1 plus, hydroxide is a 1 minus, and it's aqueous, so I'm all set again. Now I want to predict products, so let's take our first cation, which is the hydrogen, and combine it with our other anion. Can't combine it with the nitrate, it's already been done. Our only other anion is the hydroxide. Remember, we did all of this in section one. So if this doesn't seem familiar to you, go back and watch the section one video. This will go over how to predict the products. And I know that this forms water, and I know that it's a liquid. And then my uh, other cation is my potassium, and my other anion left is the nitrate. Remember, charges carry. Quantities don't, because it's a 1 plus and a 1 minus. It's good the way it is. And anything mixed with nitrate is aqueous. And we would still consider this to be a salt, even though it's a polyatomic. Okay, so because everything is 1 plus and 1 minus, this is also balanced, and so we are good. We only needed to write the molecular equation. Okay, a couple things to note. Again, like we said before, water is always a product of an acid-base reaction, so that's a re really good way to try to identify it. An ionic compound or a salt is also always produced. Now, the one that we just did, the potassium nitrate, was aqueous, and so it will remain dissolved. But you'll also sometimes produce an insoluble salt, and so it, will, it could be the precipitate. So you have to, again, check your solubility. If you wanted to retrieve that ionic compound, like the NaCl or the potassium uh, nitrate, you would have to evaporate the water. So when we talked about separation of mixtures, we talked about filtration and distillation. Because these are all in the same physical state, unless you know, form your precipitate, um, you would distill it, meaning boil out the water, leaving the ionic compound. Okay, we talked about how there could be strong acids and weak acids, and the same thing with bases. So there aren't a ton of strong acids and bases. It's good to know the few strong ones, because then basically everything else is weak. So some common strong acids are hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. Because they're strong, like we talked about, they completely dissociate or break apart in water into their ions, so into the H+, and then the anion, whatever that is, either Cl- or Nl3- or SO4- whatever. Common strong bases are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. So it can have a hydroxide, but that doesn't mean that it's a strong base. Remember, we can also have weak bases. And these strong ones will completely dissociate. 
And remember, water and an ionic compound are always produced in an acid-base reaction. Okay, so same idea. Try this example on your own, um, and then as part of our discussion, uh, you know, we'll go over the answer. Have a good day.